Morning, Anna, or afternoon, whatever time it is now. This video is gonna be way, way out of order. It's middle of November right now, Sunday afternoon. I've got a couple hours to kill here. So I'm gonna load a couple trucks and I'm gonna talk to you guys about the 620 quad track and do a rundown on that. So don't, don't read anything into, nothing's in order here. I'm just making this video because I know in a month I'm gonna wish that I had it. And the quad track leaves tomorrow, so I gotta get it done now because I, I like to procrastinate till up to the very last minute. Are you coming? Yeah, it's warmer in here anyway. Jim and I got a few loads of corn to haul. I'm hoping to get them hauled tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna load the trucks up and see to it that Jim's out here by 4 a.m. Yeah, I'm just kidding. We're not doing 4 a.m. That's for dairy farmers. Lousy, creaky door. Drives me nuts. So I'm gonna fix it. Ah, never mind. Something, something's broke inside here. It's coming from this, not the, not the actual hinges. Can't get anything nice nowadays. Rawr. Somebody's gotta wash these windows again. That really is gonna drive me nuts. Whoops, gotta do this first. Broadway closed. Oh. That's one truck down. Now we just repeat the process. We've only got four loads to go in, so I think I'll just load two trucks, one for me, one for Jim. We'll refill them when we get back here in the morning and we'll have our four loads done pretty easy. This is on uh, shares that we own at the ethanol plant so we have to deliver on our on our pool shares. Basically a percentage of what you own to the plant needs to be delivered every quarter. So that's what these four little loads are. Yeah, probably. Truck two is loaded. All right, let's get that big red horse in here and talk about that for a few minutes. Now I'm not a super technical guy and I'm certainly not a machinery wizard but I'm gonna give you the rundown of what I know the little bit that I know about this tractor and my experience with it also in the last oh 10 to 15 years I have very little experience with case machinery so I was pretty pumped to try this thing out obviously the first thing this is the new case IH quad track Steiger AFS connect 620 this has got a six liter six liter six cylinder 12.9 liter Case IH engine in it with a rated horsepower of 620 that boosts all the way up to, I believe, over 680 horsepower when it needs it. Oh, one arm frozen. Uh. There we go. The hood lifts up. You can access everything pretty easily. Once the hood is down, everything's in there pretty tight so you don't get trash building up in areas because it's all kind of sealed up here. So you don't have issues with that. Uh, they've got a massive cooling system here. You got a few pins you can pull out to access stuff and clean this system a little better. Obviously, I never had to do that. We only had it for a few hours. Everything stayed really nice and clean, but they've got a monstrous cooling system on this thing to handle those conditions where it needs that. The track system here. Next year, I'm told, marks 25 years since the Steiger Quad Track came out. These have got a cast system on here. Uh, they're supposed to be able to handle up to 64,000 pounds and they are self-tensioning, so you don't have to worry about hooking up to them and retensioning the tracks constantly. Maintenance wise, obviously this thing wasn't around for too long and we've never owned a quad track ourselves. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts in there, but 
after 25 years, I'm guessing they got some stuff figured out here. You know, I, I can't say, but uh, they ran well for us. I also really like being able to have an articulate with a large footprint on the ground that isn't so wide. So it's nice that way you've got the tracks set in here when you're going down the road. See if you can see the back of it there. I can't tell you exactly how wide it is, but it's a lot narrower than having an articulate with dual 800s on it or some triple whatever you might put on there, triple 650s or whatever. It's a lot narrower than that, so it is nice for going down the road that way. And for taking up space in the shed. Inside here, one-handed again, you can access the def tank. You can access your main disconnect here. We've got the battery posts, um, filters that are easy to get to down there for your hydraulic system. There is, uh, this is the main fill for the def tank. This is the tank here. It's got a 66 gallon def tank. There is also a fill over on the other side if you want to fill this tank from the other side. Back here, 455 gallon fuel tank. It is a monster which comes in handy, obviously, anytime on a big high horsepower tractor. Speaking of the fuel tank, the efficiency on this, again, we didn't run it for a ton of hours, but it, it seems as efficient as anything else. Again, I don't wanna to get too technical, but it seems as efficient as anything else. It seemed to do a good job. Um, I didn't notice it burning through a ton of diesel. It was burning a fair amount of def, but I think that's the higher horsepower doing heavy tillage work. I think that's why I thought it was burning a lot of def. We don't have many deaf machines out here that, that we run, so I'm not used to that. So again, I can't really compare. For filling here, you've got your step system to get up into the tank here. It's also got this handy little spot to throw the uh, diesel handle so that you can climb up here and access the tank. Also in the same area, we've got the washer fluid fill. This is the other deaf fill on the left-hand side, and we've got our high tran fills here as well. All of it's easy to access. I like how the ladder actually moves with the tractor when you turn to keep it from crowding over here. It's always accessible outside here. It doesn't get pinched inside there. It's got an independent 1000 RPM PTO back here. We didn't use it at all, but I looked up the stats on it and it shows a rated 473 uh, PTO horsepower. So that is nice if you need that to run grain cart or anything. Up here on the uh, SCVs, we've got six of them mounted on this tractor. I'm gonna look it up, but I believe you can get eight of them. <laughs> Let's see. Yep, four is the standard, up to eight. Obviously, there's six on this machine. One thing that might sound a little odd for me to even mention, but it's got this spacing in between, which, by the way, you can get to these really easy. You can clean them off really easily. But this opening in between allows for the line of sight down that back of the fuel tank where it's kind of notched down there. The tank kind of swoops down. You can see right between the SCV hookups here and right to the drawbar. If you're a farmer, that's important because you got to see that drawbar when you're hooking and unhooking things. Oftentimes it seems like that gets overlooked in some, uh, some other manufacturers, but this has got a clear line of sight to the drawbar. If you watch my other videos, we had issues with mud getting inside here. Now, I don't know. I'm sure there's some tricks to cleaning that out, but uh, w what we probably should have done is carry a spade with us and push that out throughout the day as it was kind of building up. We have had that issue on our RT tractors where it gets inside there and that's what we do. We strap a spade to the hitch of the ripper and get out every hour or so and push the stuff out so it doesn't build up like that. Probably our fault for not catching that and allowing that to happen. That's kind of the basic rundown on the exterior here. Oh, toolboxes. It's got two geez, really large toolboxes right up front here also serve as a step in case you need them. So it's got one on each side. That's handy, that's awesome. Also, as I put the hood down here, I wanna show you guys what the visibility is like. I'm literally standing right against the hood. Visibility really out every corner of this tractor, particularly out the front and the back, is better than it should be. Let's go up in the cab a little bit. I'll show you guys that and we will talk about the AFS connect part of this rig. Now you guys will have to excuse the mess. I was not expecting company. Cab-wise, it's comfortable, it's big and roomy, it's uh, quiet. Look at this, I am six foot three, and I can stretch my legs out, no issues. I mean, I'm against the glass there, but it's got all the room I could possibly need. It swivels way over. I got uh, the carpet stuck behind the seat, so it won't let me, but this thing's got uh, plenty of swivel room. Got the buddy seat here. Got your cup holder and storage there. If you're not using the buddy seat, obviously somebody was eating cookies or something. 
front and back. Again, like I complain with every tractor that has sunshades, why don't they just go all the way to the end? I don't know. These ones, these ones are wider than um, than what I'm used to, but I guess the front does a lot better job of going all the way to the end. Maybe they just make the same one. That's probably the deal. I do wish there was more storage. There's a couple really small cubbies up here that I don't know if you had a tiny cell phone you could put it in there. There's a lot bigger area here that you can put some stuff in. Um, you've got this room behind the buddy seat, but if somebody's sitting in there, you got that seat up. There's not a lot. There's a cup holder here, um, and there's really not a lot of room in there either, which I'm used to. You got plenty of floor room down there if you want to carry a gigantic lunchbox like I frequently do. But as far as like nooks and crannies, it's a little short on that for sure. Let's get the AFS Pro 1200 screen fired up here. The screens are honestly they're beautiful this has got a 12 inch screen so it's a large screen it's easy to work with this screen here once it loads up you'll see but this holds all of the main tractor functions you can control just about everything from here including the new lights it's got new led lighting package which you can individualize in case say you're pulling a grain cart and you don't want to shine your lights in the combine operator's eyes you can turn the lights on and off individually there she's chirping there we go now she's awake we've got our different run pages down at the bottom here which you can set up individually and customize i've got this one set up for my gps page one of the things that i noticed about this screen that i'm not used to i wasn't particularly fond of is it's a little slow it needs to connect i don't know what it's doing there probably because we're not outside but it takes a little time to load in between pushing buttons okay it's not a big deal overall the layout is really easy to get the hang of if you've run any computer or smartphone, it's easy to understand and easy to work around, but it isn't as quick as I'm used to where you can just button, 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 button. You've got to wait for the thing to load on uh, at certain points, which I wasn't used to. It was a mild inconvenience. But basically the rundown is that there's so much to this and everything is customizable. I'm not going to spend the next two hours going through everything, but you can set your main screens to, for whatever you want. You can watch your fuel economy. You can watch your slip. Those are a couple things that I watch. You can customize your SCVs. Maybe that's in here. See, I'm, I'm still not that smart. Maybe someday. But anyway, it's got a good screen. AFS Connect. That is a big part of this machine. So basically what that does, if I can put this into layman's terms, is it allows remote access to the service records and all the data on the machine. If you want to manage a fleet, if you've got multiple machines and you want to see like service records or when the service is coming up or how many hours are on a machine, where they're at. You can see all that through remote access on any device. You can also share that with, say, your dealer or a service tech um, or anybody that, that farms with you that wants access to that. You have to allow that so they can't just drop in and see what's going on with your machine. You have to allow that access. But that is the AFS Connect part of this machine. It is all connected. Anybody that you give access to can jump in here and say uh, maybe this is why your whatever is throwing a code at you or maybe you need some service somewhere basically it allows people to understand information about your machine if you want them to without having to get them out here and plug it into anything you can also transfer data with that so i forgot to mention that if you have any kind of harvest or planting data or whatever it may be that would be in this monitor that the the machine has done you can transfer that data to whoever may need it if you choose down here we've got the multi-function handle this is also your throttle so throttle up and down you've got your gear shifts here forward and reverse um, your auto steer button and all the the function buttons here that you can customize to run however you want i didn't play with the full customization of that at all you got your scv's levers here um, full access to stuff underneath the armrest. One thing that's kind of weird that I like, this armrest moves forward and back, depending on where is most comfortable for you. You've also got levers down here that move this whole armrest. The whole entire thing can go forward, backwards, and up and down. So let's just say you're six foot three and you're a big dude and you want that in a different place than the little shavers might want it. That's handy. Also got foot pegs. Lucky. Power mirrors. Got power mirrors. Bluetooth radio, backup cameras, well, front and rear cameras, actually, factory installed that come through this monitor. As somebody with little kids running around the farm, I appreciate that. I think that's going to do it for your Case IH 620 AFS Connect Steiger Quad Track Tour. 
I should probably clean this out now because they're going to come and get this tomorrow morning. So I'll see, make sure I don't have any uh, items left over in it and um, make sure the Welkers don't have anything left in it. So again, thank you to the Welker family, Nick, Leg Arms, the whole family over there for uh, allowing me to jump in this thing and try it out. It's been awesome. Just grab some of the garbage out of here. Maybe the paper towels. Got some of these from using the stops in the ripper. Some empty water bottles, phone charger. Look, there's something. What is? Is that a makeup brush? Leg arms don't open? Well, I, I gotta at least see what he... I'm gonna just put those back. I'm almost afraid to keep digging wood. Nick's favorite doll? He looks really familiar. Yeah, that's uh... This place is clean enough. I've had enough. They can come get it. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, in all seriousness, guys, my niece is not going to be happy when she sees that I use her makeup and brush as a prop in a video, but check out Welker Farms. I know I've said this ad nauseum, but check out Welker Farms on YouTube. Um, thank you to them for, for helping me get into this thing and bringing it over here. All in good fun. Thank you to Case IH for giving me this opportunity. And thank you to you guys for watching. That's the reason these opportunities come up is because you guys watch these videos. And so thank you to you guys. I can't say it enough. I sincerely appreciate it. And thanks for watching this video. Bye. Time to take the boy deer hunting. Final night of the shotgun season. <laughs>